Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on tabletop is called Chartered the Golden Age by Jolly Dutch. The game is for two to six players, takes about 60 to 90 minutes, and is for ages 13 and up. In the game Chartered the Golden Age, you're going to be playing as uh, merchants in the Golden Age, in which you're going to be trying to sell different things, such as gold and coffee. Uh, we got some opium over here and some silver. And the way you're going to be doing that is creating factories. You're going to be creating factories around a board, and you're going to be playing cards to expand those factories. Some factories that are larger than others will go ahead and take over the smaller ones and those smaller ones will reap the rewards to all the people who own stock in them and of course you can rebuild those industries once again on the board somewhere smaller board for smaller players larger for larger players after all the houses have been constructed and there's no more houses you can go ahead and build the game will end and whoever has the most money whether it be in stock or in actual cash is the winner let's go ahead and take a look at the game and see what's included so here's the game Chartered the Golden Age and everything that comes included. As you can see, you're going to get a ton of these buildings here, a board, different stock cards for each of the different types of buildings, along with individual specific buildings for each of the different stocks, whether it be gunpowder, gold, or opium. Over here is the stock chart, along with tokens that are going to illustrate how much value each of the stocks is worth and at what point you can go ahead and buy them. Now these are the chartered cards you'll be using. You'll have a big hand of cards, depending on the number of players, that you'll be using to place down buildings or create buildings or merge buildings together. There's also an event deck here which you can choose to use or not to use. These cards are going to actually give you the ability to uh, uh, make a little more randomness happen throughout the game. All entrepreneurs lose $10 in stock value immediately, so you know stuff like that can happen whenever they get drawn. Uh, you're going to have these little flags here which count as flag stock. You're going to be able to use these by putting them into the buildings and thusly giving you four stock value whenever it gets sold or at the end of the game. So those are pretty useful as well. You can get player reference cards here. And of course, even more cards from the other side of the board is a larger player game. This is actually going to be for like two and three players. And four to six is on the opposite side. Each player is going to start off with, I believe, 14 cards, uh, six 50s, and uh, three 100s. And 62 buildings will be put into the stockpile for a uh, two-player game, as well as a three-player game. All 95 would be included for a four to six player game. So once you get the setup down, it comes with an actually nice little reference that tells you how many buildings you need, how many open cards, which are the face-up chartered cards you can look at when you choose to buy them, as well as the face-down deck, whether or not you chose to add the events, events to that deck as well, and set aside everything. I got all your little tokens and whatnot just offside of the stock chart. Uh, then you're going to begin turns. You're going to pick a player to go first, and they're going to get some options uh, from their hand of 14 cards, or how many cards they have in their hand. Uh, the first thing you can choose to do of two actions is buy new building cards. Cards. If you want, you can pay 50 to the bank and you can buy one of the open buildings, which are the face-up cards, or you can choose to buy a closed building, which is the top of the deck. If you draw an event card, you get to go ahead and do whatever that says and draw a new card. Or if you draw from the open stack and an event pops open, you do that event and then a new card is put down. So event cards never stay, they instantly get played, and after that you're going to take the extra card. Or uh, if it's from the open stack it falls down, just a new one's going to be placed there. Uh, the other option is to play a building card. It's a card from your hand. You're going to go ahead and choose to play them. There's two types. You've got basic numbers, which are like 37, 46, 6, so on and so forth. Or you're going to have stuff like the second, third, fourth, and fifth level cards. Those cards are going to be able to be played anywhere as a wild, but the rest of them are simple numbers. They're going to be placed on the board based on the locations you're able to put them down on. For instance, if you want to put down 10, you can do that. There's a couple of rules as to how you're going to be placing those down on the board, which I'll explain down below. But in general, whenever you place down a new space, it's going to create a new building, provided you can. You're going to get a stock in that, and you're going to be able to place two other little buildings uh, that kind of make up that specific type. Then you're going to go ahead and uh, get your stock, and you can choose to buy or sell to a uh, stock, buying or selling them as long as you can. Then the next player is going to get to go. Like I said, it's very, very simple. You're going to have just two options, buying a building, Building card or choosing to play a building card. Going back and forth, creating new buildings, merging new buildings, and gaining stock as well as buying and selling stock. You know, they gain the most money is the winner. Okay, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like in a couple turns of play so you get the idea of how it works. So the game is ready to begin. We'll go ahead and choose a first player. We got two players over here off to the side and they've got their 14 cards. The first player can choose to buy from here 
or they can buy from here. It's gonna cost them 50. They would take one, place a new one down if it was an event card, which I didn't shuffle these in, but you could choose to do so if you wanted to. Then it would happen and a new card would be placed down. The other option of, of course, is to play these cards here. And playing cards is pretty simple. As you can see, all of these guys here are numbers. So you got these two um, that are going to be second level cards, which are gonna be useful, which I'll explain in a second. But let's just play a normal number down. How about we play something like, oh, 40, Eight. So 48 has been played. You're going to go ahead and look on the board for the number 48. Let's see if we can find it really quick right there. And then you're going to be able to, since there's nothing around, create a new building, 48. You're also going to get two more of these and you can go ahead and place them on either side in any way you want. That as long as there's three and they're all at a single level. And then you're going to choose which one of these specific stocks is going to be of that building's type. You go ahead and place it down somewhere on there. We'll go ahead and say Pepper. The player that placed the card down, this card is gonna get discarded and it's going to get them one free Pepper stock, placing that next to their, uh, their cards right here. And uh, after they do that, they can then choose to buy and sell stock, but you can only buy stock if it is at the 50 mark. So what does that mean? We have a stock chart here and currently nothing is on the board, but we just made Pepper. So Pepper is going to start at 30. That is the cost of the stock as well as the sell and buying price. Like I said, that you can't buy unless you've got 50 over here. So after that, this player is done and the next player is gonna get to go. They're gonna go ahead and look at their hand of cards here. They got some third levels as well as, oh, look at this, some kind of interesting things here. How how about we'll go with a uh, 22 so they'll go ahead and play 22 and uh, you're gonna go ahead and take one of these guys here along with two other ones and you're going to place them on the board somewhere just like this and then of course choosing a new stock let's go ahead and go with some beautiful tea my personal favorite and that is going to create them a new location and netting them T. Okay, so let's go ahead and find out. T is gonna be orange here, so it's gonna be down here. One free stock of T. T is going to go onto the board. And uh, of course, they're gonna be ending their turn as well. Now remember these cards are hidden and at some point you're going to need to buy new cards from over here. So selling a stock is gonna be really important. Now, how do you actually increase your stock's value as well as being able to purchase it? Well. Number one and 45 here means you're going to be able to uh, increase the value and size of the specific, it's a specific location here for this one, 20 and 24 for this one. Right now we've got 16, uh, which is over, over here somewhere, yep. As long as it's three away from any other one of these guys, you can create a new uh, location, but if it is not three away, you cannot do so. I'm trying to see if we actually have one that I can use to show you guys, 23. Uh, yes, yeah, so this would work. So if, for instance, this player wanted to, he could go ahead and play 23, taking this here, putting this up on this, and thusly increasing the value of T to 40. Uh, now, um, of course, remember that uh, each player that, that puts them um, on these things here, uh, it's gonna increase the stock value. So if you don't have that specific stock, it might not be a good idea. But placing the different numbers down is going to influence the size of a building as well as the increase in value. Now, this player over here, I believe, has only third level tokens or third level cards, and you only have three in your hand to start the game off with. But if they wanted to play one of these guys here, they could. And when they do that, it has to be on a location that has at least uh, the ability to get a third level location. So we just go like that, that's the third level. And it would increase the stock value by 30, making T go one, two, and three. And thusly, it will be able to be purchased for 70 a piece. You can purchase two of them if you would like, thusly increasing your, uh, your T stock, which can be very, very valuable. So we can go ahead and get rid of these guys here, and then we collect some of the change, and you would get more tea stock, because everybody loves tea, right? Now, that's the basic idea of the game, right? If you don't want to go ahead and uh, play the cards down and create stuff here, you can choose to buy these guys here, and occasionally you're going to see events provided you shuffle them in if you want to. Another interesting thing, too, is if you wanted to, the next player could play, let's say he played uh, 59, because uh, you have to have at least three spaces away from another one, and let's say that that space was going to be silk here. He would gain silk, and he would also gain the, uh, so the, you know, the stock in silk, and um, he would actually put silk on the board, right? And then, 
the next player might play 20, right, which is going to increase the value with T by 10. And this player here could play Silk right here uh, for 18, and that would increase Silk's value, right? Now, the player, if they wanted to, the placed here, like, let's say somebody had 19, that would merge the two locations, right? So you tally up the two here. So you have one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So when you did that, T would be larger, thusly silk would become destroyed. Uh, all of the value in silk, which is gonna be uh, one, two, three, four, is going to go down, actually removed from the board, and this is actually gonna be in increased by that cost. So one, two, three, and four, increasing the value of T. So it's pretty nice there. T would go back, or silk would go back here, so that you could choose to place it on a different location, and the value of T is going to be increased, and the cost to buy the T stock would be increased as well. The game, depending on the number of players, is gonna have a different number of these buildings here, and once all the buildings have been uh, placed down, that will target the end of the game, and uh, all these stocks are gonna be over. You're gonna acquire all these stocks, either whether you bought them or sold them, as well as money, Whoever has the most is the winner. Now, another interesting thing, too, is you have these flag stocks. At any point in time you want to, you, want to, you could put a flag stock on a location. So let's say you really liked T. It would cost you 200 to put a flag on T. Now, nobody else can put a flag st uh, stock on T. However, somebody else could, if they wanted to, put a flag stock on Pepper. Now, the next uh, location that you wanted to build, uh, let's say that Silk was actually already here, uh, you could actually go ahead and spend 400 to place another flag stock on silk okay now why would you want to purchase flag stock well flag stock is actually worth four regular stock once it gets sold though it just gets sold as four stock it doesn't actually give you cards value of it because once the cards are gone that's it uh, and if they merge together you'd also have that happen or at the end of the game it would be worth four of whatever the value is of that specific type of uh, industrial item that's the basic idea of the game chartered the golden age all right let's come up and talk about it so what do i think about chartered the golden age well first of all what does this game remind me of it reminds me of a choir a choir with a couple new and interesting adaptations well to preface this, I'm going to say that Acquire is probably one of my least favorite games, but not due to the fact that it's not a good game, just due to the fact of how I was playing it originally and who I was playing it with the competition and whatnot. It got to me, and I, I left a sour taste in my mouth. That being said, though, Chart of the Golden Age is a very fun game. If you like Acquire, this is going to be a game that you're going to enjoy as well. The difference between this game and Acquire is A, the board, and B, the 3D mechanic of it all. It's going to be increasing the value of the uh, different stock options by... Uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth levels. The board is going to be larger based on the number of players as opposed to just a big square. You're going to have these random events that are going to affect the game in certain ways. If you like less random in the game and want strictly strategy, I would get rid of these cards. But if you like a little bit of extra random, helping people out that are farther behind, you're going to like these cards. We have Devastating Fire. All players have to pay uh, 10 stock immediately or 10 value immediately. Those who don't have $10 in cash have to sell stock to pay for it. If you don't have any money in this game, uh, you're going to have to sell stock in order to get money, especially if you have no cards in your hand, just FYI. But there's a whole bunch of different events that can take place, and you can go ahead and shuffle these in the deck or not, which is nice, though. Uh, the difference as well is you're going to have these flag stocks that will change the game depending on which ones you're buying and the fact that you only get to two, so you need to be careful with that. The theme is really nice as well. It does remind me of the golden an age of all the different, uh, you know, people coming in and selling and buying all these different things. Like, oh, I want opium, or oh, I'm trying to, trying to uh, market for these gems, or I'm going to go for gold. And it's all going to be dependent on what people are playing and how they're playing it. There's a lot of deep strategy in games like these, and specifically this one as well, because of the way the board is manufactured. You only have certain things you can choose to do. Sometimes you'll have dead cards, and suddenly those dead cards later will be super valuable because they're going to be able to connect different industries together, thusly making you change the way or flow of the game. It also can behoove you to use other players to your benefit saying oh I have this piece here maybe you want to do this or not some people don't like playing it that way with this specific type of game but I think it's really nice to add a little social aspect to it as well and you're also manipulating the markets as well do you want to purchase a lot of the stock because once all the stock runs out that is the end of the game or do you want to simply continue building with these small stocks the stock you started with and not purchasing all the all of it at a very high expense rate because who knows what the stock is going to end up at the end of the game. Overall, this game's super fun and super enjoyable for those
those who like the specific style of acquire games. But for me personally, I probably wouldn't put it up to the table too much because it, it just reminds me too deeply of that game. But with enough exceptions to a player who is really enjoy who really enjoys that style of a game, this is definitely one I would suggest checking out on the Kickstarter and taking a look down below in the description if you're interested in Chartered the Golden Age. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out our here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help when you greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out uh, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. As well as don't forget Chartered, the Golden Age. For all you Acquire fans out there, this is definitely one you need to check out. My uh, wife's parents love this game. It's been their family traditional game. Well, Acquire, right? Uh, but this one, I guess, would be right up their alley as well. Also, go ahead and check out everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway. Two great sites that do tons of great work, as well as a bunch of great giveaways, even more than my own site. All right, guys, it's back from Gen Con, so I'm getting, uh, getting, preparing myself for all the videos to come. I hope you're ready. All right, I'll see you next time.